Hi everyone, it's Theodora and I'm here with Alyssa Click to talk about branding, social media, and websites. She is the head of social media for Modern Singer Magazine and freelances as a social media consultant for companies such as Arizona Opera and has been a social media developer for the Boston Conservatory Opera, small businesses throughout the Boston metro area, and more. Beyond excelling in all things social media, she also freelances as a website designer and webmaster for singers and management companies alike. Hey, Alyssa, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. Of course. I'm so glad that I could make it. So you have an immense amount of experience in social media, branding, creating websites, and I'm really excited to pick your brain. And I want to start off by talking about branding. Um, I want to know, what do you think the, are the key things a singer should think about when they're branding themselves? For me, the key things that I think about for myself as a singer, too, is how I want to be seen by agencies and people who might be hiring me, but also how I want to be seen by the people who are coming to the shows. So whether that's like the font that I use on my website or the colors that I like using or the content that I post, I like kind of streamlining it to fit my personality, who I am, as well as the kinds of characters I play. So like I'm a color to a soprano, I scream high notes, it just happens. Um, and for the most part, I play like the bubbly ingenue, so I stick with bright colors. I like fun fonts that are clean and easy to read because also I'm dyslexic, so I like making my life easier. Um, but yeah, and just really keeping all of it streamlined in that way. For me, honestly, the most important part about branding is sticking to one thing. So you're not going all over the place of like, cool, I'm Carmen, but also I'm Blanchin and also I'm Alfonso, I don't know. But like <laughs> picking one thing that you can focus on and really make it you. Were there tools that you used to, um, oh, yeah. like to choose those colors, for example? I, I, um, maybe there's a clear way of asking that question that I don't know how to do. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> yeah, for me, I helped make the Modern Singer branding workbook, which actually, so there were four of us that worked on it together and they were asking questions and putting things out there that I had never thought of before. Um, so I used that as a tool a lot. And then there's an online, um, like a color code wheel thing. I can send you the link for it. It's super useful. I think I literally Googled customizable color wheel on Google and it popped up. But so I knew that I wanted a sapphire blue when I typed it in and I found the one that I liked. Um, and then for fonts, I scrolled through like everything. I typed my name out and I scrolled through almost every single font and I clicked on it to see if I liked it or not. Um, I didn't like a lot of them. Just playing with things and seeing like how different fonts worked together with the colors, um, what works italicized, what works bold, stuff like that. Once you've figured out what your brand is, how do you take that and incorporate it into all of your materials? So for my paper materials, I've got a letterhead and it's got my headshot, my name, my contact information and my manager's contact information on there. Um, and that is the exact same on my resumes, on my rep lists, on just about anything I could hand to someone as a piece of paper. It's the exact same contact information. And then how I really made it brand is because I am Elle Woods as a person. So I put the color on my name and everything. Um, I haven't sprayed it with perfume yet. <laughs> yet is the operative word right now. <laughs> I've gotten close a couple of times. <laughs> That's amazing. And then, yeah, and then for my headshot, obviously I used the dress color to line that up with it. Um, my website, it's all the same colors. Oh gosh, what else is there? My social media has a lot of the same colors incorporated into it all sorts of things. So I'm very curious about people who are afraid of being pigeonholed. Do you have some advice to them on how to make sure that in their branding, they don't get stuck? For me, it was more focusing on myself as a singer and how I portray myself in rehearsals and such, rather than focusing on like one role, like Susanna or other roles that I've played. 
And instead of focusing on one character, focusing on, okay, cool. She might be like sunshine and roses. I don't like that as a person and that's not who I am. So more incorporating a little bit of a darker theme because I'm not like always a hot pink kind of person. I might like a hot pink lip, but not every day. Um, awesome. So you talked a little bit about social media and I am curious, what platform do you focus on when you put your social media out there? For me, I focus on Instagram because that is where I feel strongest, but I also focus on Facebook. I don't really use Twitter that much. I do think I have one. I don't think I deleted it. Um, and then also putting a lot of energy into my YouTube. Those are the only ones that I'm really using right now. I've run a couple others for companies and stuff, but with like my generation and the generation below us, it's definitely starting to turn into more of like Instagram over Facebook, but also still Facebook because you can have like events and stuff on there and kind of coordinating those to work together. So I'm really curious because TikToks, especially in quarantine, has become like a really big thing. Is it for opera yeah. lovers or not really? I don't think so. Like there's a lot of people on TikTok who are opera singers. Like I've got some really great friends on there who have an absolute blast, but it's more something fun to do rather than something to like promote your career on. Um, there's definitely some people on there who say that they're opera singers and are definitely not. And anyone who's been to an opera can kind of tell, but all in all, like if you're looking for some like short clip that you want to make and do a fun TikTok, by all means have fun. But I just, I don't see it being a viable source for career moves. When you're thinking about what kind of information you want to put on social media, what, what are some things you should think about? And are there insights in the platforms that you can look at to help you and guide you? Yeah, so for me, before I post anything on social media, I always think, okay, if a casting director saw this, would they fire me? And if the answer is yes, <laughs> I would get posted. <laughs> But if the answer is questionable, I'll usually send it to like my best friend and go, hey, is this a bad idea? And usually she'll say yes, but sometimes she'll say, no, go for it. Um, so like I do post silly things. I post a lot of videos of my cats. Um, and then I post like, a, I'm trying to get more comfortable posting me singing and actually doing what I do <laughs> on there. But um, yeah, biggest thing is if you don't want someone you're working with to see it, don't post it. Is those are just the standards that I run mine by. I think that's a fair assessment. <laughs> so talking about posting your own singing on your your Instagram or your Facebook, mm -hmm. is it? There's like a big debate. I've heard both things. Some people are like, just post a maximum amount of things because it'll just kind of like the content will get lost and people will be hearing you more versus don't put anything out there that isn't like really top, top quality. Um, what is your take on that? Both are correct. I highly recommend putting a lot of really quality content out there and taking the time to make all of that quality content. Like you don't want to post you cracking on an F online. Like, again, not something I want someone who's gonna hire me to hear, but at the same time, I don't wanna just go entirely silent. So maybe posting something that's not 100% is okay, but as long as it's 90% and up of what you're capable of doing, I say go for it. Like obviously I've recorded things in like a t-shirt and jeans in my room and it's weird and there's a cat walking across the screen fine, I'll post that because I am who I am as a person. But like if I'm singing an aria that has an E in it and I can't hit the E, I'm not gonna post it. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> how, how often is too often for posting? Depends on your audience, honestly. For me personally, posting once or twice a week on my main feed is more than enough for me to have a good amount of conversations with my followers and my friends um, and my mom, but a lot, of, a lot of times 
for the companies that I run, I'll post once a day. And going back to your insights question, this is where it really ties in where, so on any business profile on Instagram and then on Facebook pages, there's an insights tool and that'll show you demographics. Um, so like where people live, what times are the most popular that people start popping into your page, how often your page is getting seen and um, how much people are interacting versus just seeing your page. So those are kind of what I take into account for both my pages and the ones that I run professionally and seeing like, okay, cool. So people tend to pop in around like 11, 11, 15. I'm going to post at 10 30 so that they see the new content um, because the algorithms change like every other month and it drives me batty. I hate it. <laughs> but I mean, I stay as up to date as I possibly can. And it used to be like, cool, whenever you post, it's at the top of the feed. And now that's not the case. <laughs> and it makes me so frustrated. <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> but figuring out what times your followers like checking in on you. And a lot of times, uh, like I'll play around with it and post like something in the morning, something around lunch and then something around evening time. And it also depends on the day of the week. Not so much in quarantine, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> quarantine rules are completely different and nothing is real. Time is inactive. <laughs> and you just post. <laughs> like, I think I made a post at 1 a.m. a few weeks ago and it was one of my most liked ones. And I was just very confused. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, all of this work, why? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so quarantine has thrown all of my plans out the window. But, and I know I'm not the only one, but just like planning wise, I'm very type A. I love planning. Um, and all of my posting times are just kind of shot. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, great. Glad I did that. Thank you. I know that when I started this channel, I did a little bit of research on what the algorithms are looking for and it is different from social media to social media so you can't really create a content that works for all of them and i believe is that correct yeah no that's completely right like things that i will always post on instagram do not always transfer to facebook the videos everyone loves watching videos of their favorite singers across the board no matter what platform you post on that's going to be accurate if I post my cats on my professional singer Facebook page, no one's interested. <laughs> Everyone's like, who is this crazy cat lady? <laughs> but then on my Instagram, everyone's like, oh my God, a cat. So give or take. And then on the YouTube, everyone, like the comment will be like, oh, hey, look, at this time there was a cat. Well, what's their name? And it just, it's never the same platform to platform. And you can always get multiple ways let me rephrase this. The best way to get consistent contact with your followers throughout your platforms is to post the same thing in different ways. So if I'm going to post an announcement photo on Instagram, I'm going to use a different photo to make the same announcement on Facebook. And then if I was using Twitter, I would use another photo there. And, or maybe like a GIF somewhere, be like, check out my website. Are there like um, any very obvious trends for each platform that you could bring our attention to? Yeah, so for Instagram, it's going to be whatever graphic catches the eye best. Uh, what I've noticed is bright colors, big font, and no like tiny lists that go super into detail. You can't read that on your phone. Whereas on a computer on Facebook, because Facebook is a lot more generated to computers, you can do all sorts of other things. You can make unlimited amount of text. Whereas on Instagram, you get like three or four lines. So if whatever you have to say is not in those first lines, nine times out of 10, no one's gonna click the little three dots to keep reading. Um, so really getting in what you have to say. And then Instagram, you can also use hashtags. And now that you can follow hashtags, life is so much easier. <laughs> And so really catering those hashtags to what you're doing. Whereas on Facebook, hashtags are kind of null and void now. So being able to tag a page is super great. Being able to tag a person, make sure that um, their profile is okay to tag um, and stuff like that. And 
Twitter, you have to really think about what you're posting because you get a very limited number of characters. So you have to fit whatever you're going to say and any hashtags in there. And then I think if you use a graphic, it takes away some of your characters as well, which is annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like you. I also don't care for Twitter. So I, I mm -hmm. deleted my account. <laughs> you just have to post so many times a day for it to be a really viable thing. And like, if you're not posting at least five times a day, it's just you're not making any progress. I'm curious, when you are posting a video of yourself singing, um, is there a different length you should think about for each uh, platform? So for Facebook, you can post, um, I think it's an unlimited length. I might be making that fact up, but um, like I've live streamed recitals and stuff on there and they're still up and everything. But for Instagram, you can only have 60 seconds if you're going to post it on your main feed. And then you can have a lot longer if you use IGTV, um, which I've just started playing around with. Um, it's really weird. <laughs> it's so strange. I'm very confused. So I'm not going to talk to that. But you can have longer posts on IGTV, which you can then share to your main feed. But then they're also on your IGTV feed. And nothing is real. Fair enough. I don't really know either. So. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it is what it is right now. We're all learning things. Now on to websites. <laughs> I want to know what you think about when you think about a website, like what are some basic structures, um, things that you see on websites that you're like, no, 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 that's not right. Let's think about it a different way. Yeah. So for me, the biggest thing is clean lines and the ability to, to get all of your information across to whoever's looking at your website. So for me, I like having a page for all of the different things that I do. So I've got like a welcome page with a short bio. I've got my about page with my really long bio and then all of my like my press kit, my resume, my headshot, blah, blah, whatever. And that page, then I've got different recording pages. So I've got one for musical theater, one for opera, one for voiceovers, because I do that a lot. And then one for discography, just because there were too many in different places. And it would just be scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and just making it easier for people to find what they were looking for is my big thing, um, as well as keeping mostly clean lines so that I can highlight the things that I want to. And then the biggest, oh my gosh, my biggest pet peeve is when people have like, a big, super colorful, busy picture in the background, and then you can't read any of the text. <laughs> like, great, I don't know what you're telling me. <laughs> when the margins get all messed up on things like WordPress, I hate WordPress, the margins will get off and then all of a sudden the text is overlapping. Drives me batty because it's so easy to fix. It's so easy to fix. So whenever people just don't, it shows me that they're not working that hard, they don't care enough to fix it, or they just don't know, which is also not great. Um, so really being able to tell someone's personality and how they work off of their website is gonna tell you a lot about them. It's a lot of directors, casting directors, agencies and stuff are starting to look at websites more and more, especially now that everything is online. So being able to translate everything as quickly as possible, because if they're going through hundreds of websites and they can't read yours, they're going to click out of it. They're like, I don't care. I don't have time. Absolutely. And I mean, I've talked to quite a few people now and media is like, people are getting hired off of media. It's so important. Like all of this is, it takes a lot of time. So I, I understand that a lot of singers don't want to put their time towards it, but you gotta, if you want to get hired, especially post-corona, pre-corona, uh, during corona, whatever. <laughs> Definitely. And even just the bare bones of just like, hi, here's my bio, here's my resume, this is my face, here's five videos, the end. Would totally. be absolutely fine. But, oh, and then also always have a contact page. If they don't have a way to contact you, nothing can happen. <laughs> 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 but also just like a little mommy moment don't put your phone number on the website. Don't put your phone number online. It's not good for you. Second of all, don't put your email on your website. Like I take my phone number and my email off of my resume when I upload them to my website. And then I've got a big contact page. 
It's very highlighted, it's cute, it's a smiley picture at the top. And it puts your information in there for me. And then it just sends it to me so I don't have to worry about like weird people finding me. And also I took one computer science class in college. And if you put it on the internet, the spam bots will find it. <laughs> <You're> Guaranteed. <right. laughs> yeah. So unless you want a bunch of spam emails, a bunch of spam calls, also potentially from real people who are creepy, just like my mommy moment, don't put it on the internet. Social media handles, fine. Links to things, fine. Just be careful. I think that's great advice. Uh, you cannot be too careful nowadays. Um, I am curious about resumes because I have seen both. I know a lot of my colleagues who are similar to my age always put their resume on their website, but then when I'm looking to people who I emulate, they don't have it on there. And I'm wondering when is the time that you take your resume off of your website? I think the time to take your resume off of your website is when you're not getting hired off of your resume anymore. When you're getting hired because of your name, like Lizette Oropesa or Deanna Brywick, um, Nicholas Brownlee, those big names, Isabella Leonard. And once you're a big name, no one cares. Until then, no one knows what you've done yet. And no one wants to dig through your bio to find it. So until then, how I do it is I keep my resume on because yeah, I have a manager. I don't have any gigs right now. No one knows what I'm doing. For no sure. one knows and, what I've done. And it's very important even when you have a manager to self-manage because they can't possibly get you all your gigs because you have to leverage your network. So I think. And it's very important even when you have a manager to self-manage because they can't possibly get you all your gigs because you have to leverage your network. So I think. It's great advice. <laughs> I direct and I music direct as well. And I'm a choreographer. My manager's not getting me those jobs. My resume is getting me those jobs. My manager also doesn't do musical theater that much yet. So kind of playing both worlds has its drawbacks, but definitely having a manager gives me more free time to focus on other things. <laughs> For sure. Um, so. My last question about websites are for people who don't have a website and they're thinking about building one and don't necessarily have the means to pay somebody to do it. What, um, plat is it a platform for a website? I don't know. I call it a platform, so I don't okay. know. But I would definitely suggest Squarespace and Wix. If you listen to any podcast ever, there is a Squarespace ad and you can get a free um, URL name and I think it's like 20 to 25% off your first year subscription, which is amazing. It's definitely worth the investment. Or if you are in a university, most universities and colleges, especially schools of music, have a deal Wix. You can get hands down, which I didn't know about until two years after I made my Squarespace account. <laughs> so that was annoying. But... Um, yeah, so I would personally say Squarespace or Wix, like I said, WordPress drives me up the wall because yes, it is one of the most customizable things, but it's also like, I don't do code, so not my jam, but whereas like with Squarespace and Wix, I can make a block, I can make everything clean. It automatically switches it into like a tablet format or a phone format, and it shows me what it's going to look like on different devices which is really nice. Awesome, thank you. Um, I have heard great things about both of those sites, so. <laughs> um, so I'm now at the point of the interview where I ask everybody the same question. What advice do you have to young artists today? Ask for advice and ask for help if you don't understand something. It took me 20 plus years to figure it out. And then I just remember my favorite story about this, that my voice teacher, still tells to this day in every pedagogy class that she teaches is my very first lesson at grad school. I walked in, we were doing a warm up. It was something like I was still figuring out what a coloratura was. And she like spoke for three or four minutes on this one thing and I'm sitting there nodding. And so she looks at me, is at the piano and goes, so you get it? Turns back as I'm going, nope, out loud. <laughs> and 
then she re-explained it because she was still like figuring out how I learned and everything. And it definitely took, it was just so much easier to work if I was just straight up going like, hi, I don't know what's happening. Help. <laughs> or like in theory, mostly in theory class was just like, what? <laughs> so just asking for help, asking for advice, especially now that we're all in quarantine, there are unlimited resources and time to really just start asking questions. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all your insight. Yeah. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad that I got to do it. For those of you at home who want some help with your social media or branding or building your website, Alyssa is the girl for you. Uh, visit her website, www.alyssaclicksoprano.com if you want to reach out to her for help on one of those three things. And if you want to check out her social media, it is Alyssa Click Soprano on her Insta. I'm Theodora, and we've been in the wings with Alyssa Click. Thanks for tuning in.